Are we hiding something? Are we hiding something from our spouse? Are we hiding something from our parents? Something from our friends? Something from the church leaders? Are there things that may be displeasing God? What are we to do with sin? Good morning, everyone. Today, we will continue with our series on how do we grow in the Lord. Last week, I shared three pointers. Three F. Number one, feed on the word of God. Number two, forsake all that displeases God. And number three, focus on the goodness of God. Last week, we spoke about feeding on the word of God. Having an appetite, you know, longing for the word of God. Today, we will look at the second point. And next week, we will look at the uh, goodness of God. The Bible portion that we were meditating upon is uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. Let's read. Then we will no longer be infants, tossed back and forth by the waves, and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Today, let's look at forsaking all that displeases God. And I want you all to spend time and contemplate on this. Our, our actions backed by an authentic heart. David was a man after God's own heart, yet he sinned on many occasions. How is our life? Are there things that may be displeasing God? What are we to do with sin? Put them aside. Lay them aside. Now think about this. If you are looking into a mirror and you see stains on your clothes, would you go out with those clothes? No, right? You would be embarrassed to be looked at upon in the public, dressed like that, with stains on. You would immediately get them off. You would get new and clean ones on. How should that be when it comes to sin? In the same way, we need to strip off the sins from our life. Every sin, there can be secret sins too that we need to get rid of. Think about Jesus when he died on the cross. He had both his arms spread, nothing to hide. Are we hiding something? Are we hiding something from our spouse? Are we hiding something from our parents? Something from our friends? Something from the church leaders? If yes, we need to lay them aside. We need to get rid of them. Put them aside. How much of hatred, cunningness, hypocrisy, deceit and slander are we to forsake? Short answer, all of them. There is no room for exceptions. I can't say that I'm going to deal with this part or this area of deceit or hatred and not that area of slander, not that area of hypocrisy. No, we need to be ruthless when it comes to dealing with sin. Romans 8 verse 13, Paul says, For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. You can't sail in two boats. You can't serve two masters. You can't be of the world and please God. Peter says this beautifully in 1 Peter chapter 1. Because you are to fervently love the brethren from the heart, you must put aside all these things which are incompatible with love for brethren. And before I end, let me give you two principles. Number one, sin will destroy your appetite for God's word. If you're feeding on sin, 
you won't have a desire for God's word. Either the Bible will keep you away from sin or sin will keep you away from the Bible. Unrepentant sin is a major hindrance to spiritual growth. You know, James chapter 1 verse 21, it says, So get rid of all the filth and evil in your life and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power to save your souls. The only soil God's word grows in is the heart of humility, eradicated from the weeds of sin. They must be plugged and thrown out to make place for God's word. And number two is unforsaken sin will keep you from growing spiritually. If you really want to grow spiritually, you will have to deal with the sin in your life. There is no way around it. Sin has to go. Let me say this again. Sin has to go or your growth will be muffled. Everything that displeases God needs to be forsaken, needs to be laid aside, needs to be get rid of. Let's look into the Lord, onto the Lord in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for this beautiful morning that you've given us. Thank you for speaking to each one of us, Lord. Lord, we know that you have a plan and a purpose in each one of our life, Lord. Let your will be done, Father God. Help us, Lord, to forsake everything that displeases you, Lord. Lord, we pray that reveal it to us, Lord, the areas that, that we need to work upon and get rid of and that needs to be laid aside, Father Lord. Have your mercy rest upon us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Help us, Master. Give us the direction, Master. Thank you for hearing our prayer and answering our prayer, Lord. Help us to get more and more close to you, Lord, and to grow in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all and have a wonderful day.